then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the world and forest glades I mountain grandeur and see the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my savior god to thee sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. And take me home. What joy shall fill my joy heart? Shall fill my heart. Then I, I shall, shall bow in humble adoration, and then proclaim, My God, how great Thou art! Then sing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's Sunday. Yes. And we're in church. And the sun is shining. And the sun is shining outside. We'd like to welcome you here to the sanctuary today. I'd like to welcome those of you who are joining us online today as well. Welcome to King of Glory Lutheran Church in Providence Forge. It is a blessing to be here. I'm Pastor Larry McReynolds, and I'll be assisted today by Vicar Adam Gray. And I would like to just say to you all who are watching us today that if you're not living in southeastern Virginia and you're wondering what was that all about, um, it's been rainy and icy and snowy the last couple of weekends, so it's a, it's a joy uh, to gather once again and, uh, and to be at worship together, and we're glad that you're with us as well today. May the Lord bless all of us. As we gather, we are a church that connects Next to God and His people, people grows, grows in faith, faith and love, and lives through service and sharing, that all may know the love of Jesus. And that's who we are um, as we live our life in Christ. A couple of announcements as we begin today. First, um, we are in the season of Lent, and I'd like to just invite you, if you're at worship with us today, um, if you would like a devotional booklet um, through our partnership with Lutheran Hour Ministries, uh, this devotional booklet, that's, it's called The Marks of Love. It's a daily devotion. Um, it's available for hard copy in, in the back. You feel free to take one home. If you know some people who are at home and maybe 
not connected with any place, you might want to give this to them as a way uh, to help them uh, during the course of, of uh, this Lenten journey and, and let the word work in their heart through these devotions and through the scripture that's shared as well. Um, you may also, uh, if you'd rather not have a paper copy, you can just look, check out our website, www.kognk.org, and just go to the menu and click on the menu and look at the marks of love, and you can have a daily devotion every day uh, through the website. So there's many opportunities. So uh, may the Lord bless our Lenten journey um, as we begin uh, this season of Lent. Uh, one of the things that I, I'd like to encourage people to do is a lot of times in a lot of traditions we give up something for Lent or we kind of refrain from doing something for Lent. I'm going to ask you to do stuff for Lent, okay? Um, I'm going to say that it would be a good thing to get into the Word during the Lenten season, to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. The best way to do that is to meet Him in His Word. And so I encourage you to, to, to be in the Word during the course of Lent. And I also encourage you um, to reach out to others. Uh, there are people in our midst, in our communities, are your neighbors, who maybe are not connected with any church, uh, maybe who don't know of the Lord Jesus. They don't know that God loves them. Maybe they're walking with a weight on them because they're alienated, thinking they can't go back. Um, so just take time to pray for those people, number one, and pray for the opportunity and the boldness even to reach out to them as well. Another way to be able to maybe reach out in a new way, um, is maybe to participate in something that would help people who ordinarily we wouldn't have a chance to, to connect with. Um, every day we see people, if we're, if we're in Richmond, if we're in different parts of uh, the city, and even in uh, our area as well too, there are people who are homeless, there are people who need shelter. We have a ministry at King of Glory here. Um, we do mats for the homeless through our prayer shawl ministry. And uh, Dolores Zoller, who has been kind of leading that charge uh, since we began a partnership with Moments of Hope Ministries in Richmond to um, give mats to the homeless that we make out of plastic bags. And you guys have been excellent at bringing in millions of plastic bags. We have plastic bags under the welcome table. We have plastic bags in the shed in the back that you have faithfully brought in. Um, and, and Dolores and Doug and a few other people take those bags and they strip those bags down into uh, almost like little yarn pieces and, and Doug puts them kind of in a, in a ball. So he has like balls of plastic. It looks like balls of plastic yarn it's at home. It's called Plarn. It's called Plarn. It's a new word, I think. <laughs> but Doug, you know, he's, he has got a doctorate in education. He can do anything he wants, okay? <laughs> so Plarn. And, and one of those things that I think that maybe we can do is the Zollers would love some help. We have a few people who are doing that in the congregation, but if we were able to do even more, we could help even more. And maybe during the season of Lent, this is a time to do that. And so it, as an opportunity to, to help out, if, if you would be willing to learn how to actually crochet those, knit, knit those things okay. together. What is it called? Crochet. Crocheting. I was right the first time. That was a Ruth word, okay? Um, that um, they would supply, they would do all the tough stuff of, of turning the bags into the plarn for us. And your job would be to make something that eventually will look like this. And this is a rolled up mat. And as you can see there, it's all made out of different plastic bags. You could tell that people went to Walmart here and there people went to Publix. There's a lot of food lions showing up. But these are invaluable for people who are living on the streets, living on benches. And um, this creates a good cushion. We also make um, uh, bags for the folks as well. And so um, consider that as an opportunity. And um, we're going to be able to put a, a video online at our website that will show how it's done. And if you could connect with us, if you'd like to have some plarn, it takes 12 rolls of plarn to make one of these. And so uh, they are, they're busily preparing for your help. So if you'd like to be a part of that ministry, something to think about during Lent and beyond. A um, couple of other quick announcements. Um, again, the giving statements, uh, you, you know the information on it. Any problems with, with them? Um, as far as content, you could touch base with Melissa Gray 
Um, if you would like a printed copy and you can't download your copy of the uh, statement, uh, connect with Dave Raymond and he'll make sure that you get a copy as well. Vicar, any announcements today regarding uh, the online Bible study? It's going well. Everything's it's going, running smooth. If you want to join us, Thursday nights at 7. Okay, it's never just too late to join. Just send me an email and every week's a different lesson, so it's great. That's great. And you can you can go on to the website as well to look at uh, past lessons mm -hmm. as well. And so you can, you can catch up and be a part of that. So, great. All right, let's, um, any announcements that anybody else has today? Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you for the great blessing you give us in Christ Jesus of knowing that we are yours forever because of your great love shown to us on that cross. And so, Father, as we gather today in this place, we ask that your word would come to us and that you would meet us uh, where we are today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Peace be with you. And also with you. We sing together our first hymn. We rise. our sins before God and one another. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. By faith, we humbly approach God in confidence, seeking his mercy, grace, and forgiveness. God's word says that if we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confident in God's grace, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. 
cross of Christ stands before us and changes everything. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son Jesus to die on the cross for you and for me. And for his sake, he forgives us all of our sins. By his death on the cross and resurrection from the grave, we are set free from sin and from death. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore announce that we are forgiven and set free of all of our sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
The struggle between good and evil rages within and around us, and the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word. When we fall, raise us again and restore us to live lives that reflect you. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? <laughs> so, how's it going? We haven't been together in, in this room for a couple of weeks because of the crazy weather, right? You've probably been stuck indoors even more than ever because of the crazy weather, right? It's been hard to get outside because of ice and uh, treachery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Out there on the roads and the sidewalks and around your house, yeah, all that sort of stuff. So if it could get worse because of COVID, the weather made it even worse. And and we've had it actually not nearly as bad here in Virginia as some place, some other parts of our country, have we? Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, I was supposed to talk to a teacher, and some parts of our area though too were hit with no power. Uh, I was supposed to talk to one of my teachers on on Friday. And uh, there was no school, so I we didn't talk. We didn't have our meeting. But uh, when I did talk to her about rescheduling, she goes, "Yeah, uh, we're sitting in front of the fireplace here in Richmond. She lives in Richmond. Uh, there's no power at my house. Haven't had it in hours. Trying to stay warm. So even right in our own area, uh, there's been some tough, tough things. It's it's been like that. It's been one of those years. It doesn't seem to end. What's going on?" Our, our second lesson today, it says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. Do you feel blessed today? The sun is shining. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was shining yesterday, and, and we remarked, What is that orange orb in the sky? <laughs> we hadn't seen it in a while. Like a long while. We are blessed. But I want to look at the last part of this second lesson. Because what it says is, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In other words, guys, in other words, children, the Lord doesn't change, and He every gift we have, is good and perfect for God. Every gift you've ever received, every good gift is from Him. And then this last part really is the kicker. It says, of His own will, He brought us forth, or He, he brought us, He created us, by the word of truth, and we know that, we're created by His word. The whole earth was created by His word, right? He said, and let there be, and it was. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. I want to talk to you for a second about just that. First fruits of his creatures. Back in the Old Testament, now I've got to get a drink, my mouth is awful dry. Back in the Old Testament, God's people had to make sacrifice for their sins. And they were required to bring the first fruit of their labor, the first fruit of what they had, which meant the best of what they had, the first fruit. So if they were a farmer, they'd bring the very best of their crops. If they had a, a, if they had a, a flock of sheep, or a flock of goats, or a flock or a, a herd of cattle, they would bring the very best from that that herd or that flock, and it would be sacrificed to God. The first fruits, the very best. That was what was required as a sacrifice, an adequate, a good sacrifice, a, a sacrifice that would be pleasing to God in atonement in, so that their sins could be forgiven. That was Old Testament times. We don't live in those times anymore because the sacrifice has already been made by the first fruit, God's first fruit, His Son, Jesus, right? The very best. He gave His very best, His Son, for our for our Atonement for our forgiveness. Then he says, 
says that we should be a kind of first fruits of his create of his creatures. What do you suppose that means? First fruits. You know what that means? That in everything we do, we give him our best. Our way of saying thank you. <clears throat> Because it says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. We are blessed in all things. When the power goes out, you're still blessed. When you have to stay home because of COVID-19, you're still blessed. Right? We are. You know, may not feel it, but we are. <laughs> you still are. <coughs> and we are his first fruits. The other part of that means that he created us pretty cool. He created us like first fruits, like that spotless lamb, like that best part of the crop. We are the cream of the crop. In his eyes, we are first fruits. He sees us as perfect. He sees us as good enough to be seen as perfect now because of Jesus' sacrifice. He says, you are my cream of the crop. I see you as first fruits. That's how he sees us. Now that's pretty darn cool. And I think that's better than we see ourselves most of the time. God sees us better than we see ourselves. And especially in these days, it's easy to be down and feel grumpy and, you know, depressed and sad. And feel like, ugh, the world has got it out for us. And in some ways maybe it does, but God doesn't. He's blessing us every single day. Little ways and big ways. We are his first fruits. Remember that. He loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to save you. The first, the very best first fruit. And now he calls you the first fruit. He calls you the best. And all he wants you to do is to remain steadfast. He says, remain steadfast. Hold on to me. And remember, I love you so much. You are loved today. You are blessed today. Share that love. Have a wonderful day, friends. first reading is from Genesis chapter 22. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, <clears throat> Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took it in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Will Provide. 
as it is said to this day, on the mount of on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from James chapter 1. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, and for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who loved him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we would be kind of the first fruits of his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We rise and we sing together. <clears throat> Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open 
and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out of the, into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of my Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. and peace, they're yours in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 The word for today, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Please be seated. <clears throat> so let's be clear about that scripture verse that I just read, okay? It's not just the men but it's everyone as well, okay? It's the person, okay? It's God has done this for us. He's done this for us and made this promise to us in Holy Scripture. The Gospel lesson for today um, works well with the Old Testament lesson and the, uh, the Epistle lesson for today as well, all kind of intertwined with each other um, in its truth and its power. We take a look at the Gospel lesson today from St. Mark. And that Gospel of St. Mark couldn't be more succinct, right? It couldn't be more to the point, unlike the other Gospel narrative of the baptism of Jesus, we, where we see a little bit more, we see a little bit more stuff that happens here very, very quickly. You know, it says that Jesus went and he was baptized, and the Holy Spirit came and descended on him like a dove, and a voice of his Father came from heaven and said, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. And then it says, right after that, the Spirit immediately, it says, drove Jesus out into the wilderness. I, I got to thinking about that. That's kind of an interesting perspective when you hear it that way, when you hear the word immediate, and you also hear the word Spirit connected to that. It wasn't that after the baptism, you know, Jesus decided, hey, let's have a little baptismal party, let's just, you know, get together with some friends and, and celebrate um, but rather it says the Spirit of God immediately sent Jesus, drove him into the wilderness. And I think that was done for us, right? I mean, Jesus was 
was perfect. He didn't really need to be baptized for any repentance of sins, because he had none, right? He was created as a human in, in every way the same as we are, except without sin. But yet he humbled himself, even at that point, at the beginning of his ministry, to humble himself to undergo and, and go through the ritual of baptism. And as a sign for us, that he was one of us. But then it says immediately he was driven out into the wilderness. Because that's where he met the world. That's where he met the stuff of the world. And that's where he was confronted by the evil one. You and I, as baptized believers in Christ Jesus, we are out in the wilderness all the time. You know, the wilderness, um, you know, takes on different forms, different, different scenarios. But you and I, make no mistake about it, we're aliens in this world, Scripture says. We're, this is not our home. We're, there's something about us in Christ that, that the world, it's, we're uncomfortable in it because we don't fit necessarily all the time. There's a wilderness aspect to our life in the midst of this world, okay? And so we go, we're confronted on a daily basis with the evil one who comes to us, who tries to deceive us. He lurks around the corner, you know? He's, he's there kind of in the shadows. Satan and all of his minions. The devil's power, and there is none, by the way. Let's have an amen to that. Amen. amen. Let's have a better amen. That was a weak amen. <laughs> okay? Amen. The devil has no power over us. Amen? amen? Amen. Okay? Christ Jesus died for us and put to death all of our sin, and he destroyed death for us. That's the reality in which we live as baptized believers in Christ Jesus, as people who trust in his word, as people who enter the wilderness with Jesus at our side. Jesus, when he entered his wilderness for 40 days, humbled himself, and he had God on his side. He had his Father with him. And still, he was confronted by Satan. And I find that just to be very powerful, and it kind of is descriptive for us. You and I are confronted by Satan all the time. He shows up in different ways. He shows up in sneaky ways to deceive us, to try to knock us off guard, to try to convince us with the deception that, you know, you're really not as good as you think you are. And we're not, by the way. But you know that promise that God made that he's going to love you forever? Not after what you did. Right? When we sin, and, and we all do, do we have some sinners in the room? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, we sin, it's what comes natural to us. It's why God rescued us. That's why God uh, sent his promised lamb to us, that we would be saved not by ourselves, because we can't, but rather he took care of that and accomplished that on the cross at Calvary through his son Jesus the Christ. But as we go through life, we're confronted by sin, and sometimes when we fall into sin, when we're caught have you ever been caught in the act of doing something you're not supposed to be doing? I see husbands looking straight ahead, and I see wives looking at husbands. <laughs> it usually, involves, usually involves a diet. Okay. <laughs> you know, yes, we do. We all do. We all we all do that. And sometimes we have we have two responses. One of the responses would be, "What? Me? Right?" We we have two cats. You you know you you even those of you at home are are knowing our two cats. We have we have two glorious little kittens, uh, and and they are just wonderful. And they're in the learning process of learning to be kittens, emerging someday to be cats. And uh, and so uh, George and Gracie are their names. <clears throat> and someone in our family, um, I can't remember who it was, Ruth, um, <laughs> bought them a hard blue ball. I said buy it. You didn't, you, it was Ruth hard. said she didn't buy it. Did you steal it? it no. 
It's a toy from upstairs. Okay, it's a toy. So we bought it somewhere along the line, okay? And so it's a, it's a hard round ball, okay? So imagine this now. Hard round ball on long wooden floor. And it sounds like a bowling alley. <laughs> but it, it's two kittens trying to play soccer in a bowling alley. That's kind of what it sounds like, okay? And at about 4.30, this 5 o'clock this morning, I, I was awoken by the sound of that ball, like, going back and forth on the door outside the bedroom. I could hear it. I could, and, and where our bed is located, you can look right down, okay? And, and that ball was coming, and I could hear it, and I, I sat up in the bed, and I caught the eyes of those two cats. And I swear, not in a sinful way, I swear that Gracie looked at me and she said, What? What? Me? <laughs> and then she looked back at, at George. It was him. <laughs> He's making me do this. We do that too. Brothers and sisters, you've had that, right? Family relationships. I didn't do it, Mom. It was him. So we deny our sins sometimes. We refuse to acknowledge it. Or, or sometimes... We even blame God. I wouldn't have sinned if you didn't put me in this situation. That happens sometimes. The evil one deceives us to think that that's an okay thing to do and to say. Because he wants nothing best to gnaw at us inside. To, to knock us off of our foundation of faith. And to make it precarious for us as we move through life's journey, through the wilderness in which we live. But he has no power over us, my friends. He has none, except that which we give him. Right? We can acquiesce to his deception. We can say, okay, uh, maybe I'm not. Maybe, maybe you did do this, God. Maybe, God, you're the one who caused me to sin. Not so. In James today, if you look at that, that beautiful lesson today, James is, is explaining a little bit about how life in the wilderness is, right? And he says, Blessed is the person who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Right? It's keeping faith is what that's all about. The trial is keeping faith in life through the wilderness. The trial for Jesus as he walked through that wilderness journey and Satan hoped against hope that he could destroy the word made flesh, Jesus the Christ, with his own word. Right? He tempted him in so many ways. And what did Jesus do? Jesus fought back with the word. The word of God fighting back with the word itself. Right? Because he had no power. Get away from me, Satan. Get behind me. Get, get away where I can't see you, is what Jesus said. There's, there's a great verse in the hymn, A Mighty Fortress, and I want to just read one with me. We're not going to sing it right now, but it stands at number three. It goes, Though hordes of devils fill the land, all threatening to devour us, we tremble not. Unmoved we stand. They cannot overpower us. Let this world's tyrant rage. In battle will engage. His might is doomed to fail. God's judgment must prevail. And then he ends with this, and he says, One little word shall fell him, destroy him. And that word is Jesus. Jesus, who became the promised lamb, the lamb that God provided for us in this day and age. We see that beautiful story of Abraham willing to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. And we see how God provided the lamb. We see how Abraham, even before taking the knife to, to sacrifice his own son, he answers his son's question, right? Dad, here we are. Where's the lamb? Right? And, and Abraham knew what he had to do. And he was willing to trust God for the outcome. Trust God in the middle of that wilderness. 
What a wilderness Abraham must have felt and experienced during that moment. Here, God wants me to do this to my son. But, but Abraham moves forward in faith, and he says these beautiful words, right? He says, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. And just as Isaac was rescued, we too are rescued as well. Because God sent into our midst, into our life, into our wilderness, his son Jesus, his only son, his only son, to die on the cross for us, to be sacrificed for us, to become the Lamb of God for us, that all of our sins might be forgiven, that we don't have to worry or fear or pay any attention to the evil one who wants to, when we are in our wilderness, to deceive us that God doesn't really love us. He does. He's proven it by the cross. He's proven it because there was real blood shed on that cross for you and for me. Though undeserving, out of love, God accomplished that for us. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, is what James says. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. God doesn't cause these bad things to happen to us. But rather, we live in the midst of the wilderness to trust in him. We live in the midst of the wilderness so we can trust in God who loves us, who journeys with us, who has promised that, and to, and to hang on to his every word of life that we come through all of that based on his promises of love toward us and deliverance and salvation that are, that are ours in Christ Jesus this very moment because of God's love for you and for me. But each person, when tempted, this is a great description. If you want to know what, what sin looks like, this is a perfect description. But each person who is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. The root of sin for us is right here. <laughs> it's in us, right? God doesn't place it there. It's in us. It's part of our nature. And it's because of that that God took it into his own hands to save us by his grace, by his son Jesus on the cross. Then the desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Our God promises us life eternal. Our God has granted that to us in Christ Jesus. Our God tells us that in the midst of the wilderness, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of pain, in the midst of um, you know, times when you are disappointed or confused, times when even when you're tempted to fall away, God says to you that you are loved, that I have already accomplished this for you. I've sent my son Jesus to die for you that you might have life right now and forever. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers, James says. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought forth brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. We're showing the world what it looks like to be God's chosen, to be people who are valued by God. May we be his people in the world today, confident of where we stand, confident of where God's love placed in our hearts resides, and confident in the promises of God, in Christ Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for sending Jesus to us. And we thank you, Lord, that we live now under the shadow of that cross, but we live also in the bright light of the empty tomb. Death no longer has any power over us. Though we're sinners, we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb the Lamb of perfect sacrifice, the Lamb who is your Son, your only Son, who 
who you sacrificed for us. Help us to remember that as we continue in this wilderness unto everlasting light. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We rise together as God's people and we speak with boldness and with confidence the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I invite you to join together uh, with the worship team as we sing uh, together in Christ alone.
we gather uh, today in prayer, we give thanks to the Lord at this time in our worship for the offerings that have been gathered both today at, at the offering plate as, as you have left the offering, or maybe it's been during the week as your offerings have come during the course of electronic mail or via online opportunities, and also for the times that we have served and, and shared our talents and uh, our time with others as well. We offer all of those gifts to the Lord today as we come uh, before him in this place. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the great blessing that you give us of providing for us in every way. We thank you, Lord, that you give us all that we need in this daily life. And all that we have, Father, is yours. And we thank you, Lord, um, for these good things and every good and perfect gift which comes from you. We ask, Lord, that you would accept our gifts of time, our talent, and our treasure, Lord, offerings that you have provided for us that we now give back to you. And we ask, Lord, that you would use all of our gifts, um, that you would use them, Lord, in ways that are unimaginable to us, so that more and more people would know your love, that those who are without food might be nourished, that those who are homeless might be able to find shelter. We pray, Lord, that those who are hopeless may be filled with your Son, Jesus, who is our hope. So, Father, Use these gifts. Receive them with thankful hearts. And use them, Lord, so that all people might know the love of your Son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 As we pray today, a couple of um, prayers, a couple of people to remember. Um, we remember uh, today uh, those who were affected with the ice storms in Texas. Uh, where I think the total is like 30 people passed away due to the storm. So we, we pray for those families and, and for those people who are now um, getting power back and uh, there's, there's some food shortages and water issues. So we, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Texas. Uh, we also pray for um, uh, Doug and Dolores Zoller's granddaughter, Jenny, who had eye surgery. Jenny is blind. Um, and uh, she's been having crushing, crushing headaches. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way they're treating it is they re removed her, her eyeballs mm -hmm. um, in hope that there would be some relief from pressure. And so we pray, we pray for Jenny. She came through the surgery quite well. And, and uh, when she was home, not home a day, uh, when her husband, <coughs> Kevin, um, had some kind of an intestinal blockage and had to be rushed to the hospital. Okay. So we pray for these two young people that the Lord would, would bring healing to both of them um, during these days. And uh, we had a chance to talk and pray with, with Dolores about that yesterday. And then we also uh, pray for our sister Debbie uh, Caldwell, um, who uh, phoned uh, the other day that her, her former husband uh, passed away quite suddenly. And we especially lift up their children together. We lift up Autumn and Brian and Colin, uh, who are deeply affected by their dad's passing. And so we remember that family in prayer, uh, the Witherspoon family. We also pray for Jeff and Sue Lick, friends of, of Ruth and myself, and, and all who are on our prayer guide as well. We rise for prayer. Heavenly Father, as we enter this Lenten season of repentance and renewed devotion, we pray that you would remember us according to your steadfast love and goodness in Christ Jesus, and that you would help us by your Spirit to walk in your ways each and every day, reflecting your love and your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you placed the wood of the cross on the back of your only Son, Jesus. <clears throat> that as the promised offspring of Abraham, he might become the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of the world. As we journey through this Lenten season, keep us, help us to keep our eyes fixed on your Son, Jesus, who you provided to save us from sin and from death. Lord, in your mercy, we are prayer. Prayer. Almighty God, preserve and protect all of your people and keep us safe from the assaults of the evil one. 
as your son Jesus overcame Satan in the desert by the word of God, give us the victory as well as we do battle with his deception day by day. And continue to give us your victory through Jesus and his word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father of light, from whom every good and perfect gift comes down to us from above, keep us from being enticed by our own desires to misuse your gifts in sin. And help us to use them instead in service to you and to our neighbor. Bless this day our president, our governor, our county administrator, and all of our elected leaders, that we may be governed wisely and justly uh, for the good of this present generation and also for those to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, give joy to your people on whom you have laid the commission to preach the gospel through our lips and our lives each day that by your means many would be saved through in every community, city, and nation, that together we may share in the blessings of Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we continue to pray this day for our nation. We pray that tensions and divisions would cease, unite our nation and its leaders regardless of political differences. We pray that we might truly be one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. May the Holy Spirit help us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who is our only strength and our only hope. Lord, have mercy on our land and its people. Give us the courage to be your church in the midst of it all. During these darkened days, use us to bring Jesus light and love to our neighbors and to the world around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Father, protect and sustain those who protect and defend us, especially those who serve in the military. We also pray that you would be with those who serve in law enforcement in our communities, and especially we lift up the New Kent Sheriff's Department and Sheriff Joe and and Heath. We pray, Lord, that you would also be with first responders and firefighters and EMS, and as well as doctors and nurses and medical teams. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we pray on this day for those who we love, our family and our friends who are in need of prayer today. Father, hear their names as we lift them before you in this place. We lift up Debbie and Autumn and Brian and Colin, Sue and Jeff. Jenny and Kevin. Lord, you know the needs of these people, both those that we've spoken out loud, those in our hearts, those on our prayer guides. And we pray, Lord, that you would bring to each of them what they need. Healing, strength, comfort, hope, peace. Lord, Bring all of them, Lord, into your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, help us to live our baptismal life each day as your people. Open our eyes to the needs of those around us and give us your heart to serve and love our neighbors as we connect, grow, and live, that all people might know the love in your son Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So receive our prayers today and we give them to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in in heaven, heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our worship as we receive and gather around this table to receive the Lord as he comes to us in his Holy Supper today. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way to everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. 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 Come to Jesus. Jesus. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor, take a drink. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. 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 We rise. Lord Jesus, your true presence has come to each of us in your word and promises, and we give you thanks and praise. We pray that we might go out now into the world as your people, your church, proclaiming your love. Strengthen us as your people, connected to you by your spirit that we may grow in faith and love to share the good news of Jesus as we live in him. Amen. As God's people we proclaim, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power and work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to go out into our own wilderness, we receive once again these wonderful words of blessing from the book of Romans. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 We sing together our closing hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. serve the Lord, that all may know the love of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Sunday.
Fill my heart, then I shall bow. 